Hello all, come you to today's Kubernetes demo session on behalf of MindMagic. So let's quickly get started with today's uh, demo on Kubernetes and we will talk about Kubernetes and we will give you as much as information possible. So intention is to give you, to take you uh, through Kubernetes. So we will give you a walkthrough on our course content, what all things we are going to do it, how we are going to do it. Our course track is basically we are following the certification track. So we will talk about that also. Few things which we will be doing installation and some demonstration also. So that would be part of today's is the demo session so let's quickly get started with that about my experience so it's been uh, 20 years almost two decades i'm there in it industry regarding the devops and cloud solutioning so it's been five years now so from last five plus years i'm into devops and cloud solutioning and working for various customers so i have a hands-on experience and I'm a senior architect, right? I'm also full-time employ uh, employed for a company, MNC. I also work for uh, full-time, so I take a lot of customer, customer support, many things. Regarding my training experience, right? If you would like to know my training experience, so it's been now three years now, so I do a lot of training and freelancing. Training is basically out of passion, I do a lot of training. So I have a lot of passion for training, so that's the reason. I enjoy training uh, trainings a lot and it's been three years I've been associated with uh, Mind Magic, and we do a lot of training. Working for many customers, yes, we all we are also working for many customers because many people corporate, mostly in corporate world, people they need a training partner like Mind Magic, like us, where we have experienced professionals who can train their people day in day out who are working on various projects. So we train their people. So we have uh, various uh, customer support also. Initially, when we train people, they need some kind of a backend support also till they till they settle down with the with their work, with their day to day activities, because it's a new environment, new platform. So we also provide backend support. Right? So that's a that's where Mind Magic we are the, the global partners. Right? So this is all about myself. So before we start, we will focus on Kubernetes uh, training curriculum and what we are going to be going to do on Kubernetes, right? And how we are going to do. So we'll spend few minutes here. We will understand. And the intention is we will give you as much as information we can get, right? So we'll, we are going to cover each and everything here. Another thing is all these course content. If you look at it, right? All these course content, we have picked up from the certificate modules of Kubernetes. There are two certificate tracks. One is the certified Kubernetes administrator. Another is certified Kubernetes application developer. All our course modules, we have crafted our course from the certificate module so when we train people so side by side our track is also following the certificate module so we are following the certificate module and what all things we cover so these are the high level agenda high level course content beneath that we have many things which is followed and driven by hands-on experience right which you will feel at mind magic so quickly walk you through all these things right so one by one we will start so what we do we start with kubernetes api so it's an api application microservices architecture so we'll understand what is kubernetes api kubernetes it's a synonym of k8s is synonym of kubernetes another name of kubernetes in short we use k8s and if you see k8s k8 is essentially it is nothing but the first and last letter if you look at it and there are eight characters in between, right? Between first and last, right? So let me count for you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we also call KHS. And for you to understand, when you go to Google and when you put KHS and when you search any information, it will give you all the relevant information related to Kubernetes only. So it's a synonym to Kubernetes, right? So why Kubernetes is so popular? So we talk about various core features of Kubernetes, which gives an edge to Kubernetes, right? So that is the reason Kubernetes is so popular in comparison to various other orchestration tools in the market. But Kubernetes is the leading one. Why? We will see that. We also uh, do Kubernetes. We also do parallel uh, training for uh, Docker. And by this time, our people are already trained with Docker Swarm. So what we do? Docker Swarm, this tool is again an orchestration tool which comes from Docker. So we compare with Kubernetes and we see what is the difference between the two. Kubernetes, here we can manage even a complex environment, right? So all complex environments and the things are much more lively, right? All monitoring, all self healing we do everything. So here we just compare and we get some feel of it, like what Kubernetes is going to bring, right? So once we have this understanding, Kubernetes and features and orchestration, then what we do? We start with Kubernetes architecture so to begin with kubernetes architecture there are various components we have api server right which is our front end going to be front end and master node which is controlled by api server and it's an api application so we have an api server component here etcd etcd is basically an inbuilt data store for kubernetes it's an embedded data store we need not to bring from outside the moment we start kubernetes we 
have etcd already configured so it's an encrypted data source when i say encrypted means this database is already have an encryption layer and whatever the data we put will be encrypted automatically it's a very good feature in kubernetes and all my sensitive information whether my token passwords everything will go into etcd we also have another component which is again an embedded component within kubernetes right we call it scheduler where it will schedule and do the deployment right so kubernetes is a self managed cluster management tool right so we have all these components it's again an embedded scheduler we are not going to bring anything from outside we will it will just internally use and it will help us to deploy right if i want to deploy my application just now i can just go and immediately i can deploy if i want to plan my deployment right nightly deployment or some maintenance activity i can even plan by taking help of scheduler kubernetes architecture that we speak so widely we cover master node and worker node so there are various nodes and logically we group all these nodes and we create a cluster environment and that is what we call as a master node and worker node right? so this all about kubernetes architecture and we deep dive with all these thing and we physically we with the same approach we go ahead and we create the kubernetes cluster environment so our actual installation will begin from here so if you look at our installation process normally this is our preferred choice linux and ubuntu right so these are the preferred choice for linux and for any production environment for any enterprise use environment right linux is always the preferred choice uh, there are a lot of benefits so we do uh, do on linux and ubuntu right and here there are various types of installation which we follow right so we do cube adm which is basically uh, bare metal installation nothing is there right from the base right from the ground zero we have to build each and everything we have to physically take the machines logically we have to group them we have to create the cluster one of them would be my master another will be worker worker node so we do through cube adm right so cube adm cube ctl and kubelet are the essential components component of kubernetes when you install so these are my kubernetes cluster environment they will set up right cube adm is for administrative activities cube ctl cube ctl is the de facto kubernetes command line where we will manage entire cluster using cube ctl kubelet is my worker node thing it's a service agent which will which will be running on worker node each worker node will have its own kubelet and it will manage the entire worker node so we are going to talk about each and everything during the installation process installation process takes almost a couple of hours right so we explain people we will understand people so we do all that installation and then we will also ask you to do your installation we will be doing the monitoring right so you would be doing the installation because this is hands on session so you also will be performing the installation right so we will have a thorough understanding here and we will do installation once we install kubernetes our cluster is ready now we can use this cluster right so cluster setup now we what we do once the cluster my cluster setup is done we deploy workloads right so we will deploy few workloads and kubernetes we already know that kubernetes we don't deploy container raw containers created by docker or any by any other tool what we do kubernetes what it will do it will take the containers and it will encapsulate into kubernetes by adding few more additional functionality and features and that we that encapsulated environment we call as a pod so we do a pod deployment here what is the full form of pod if i would say if i concatenate this definition of pod i would say production on demand services right production on demand services and we start deploying right and we start deploying into our cluster and when i say pod deployment essentially i am talking about container right so inside pod what is running containers are running right so we'll talk about all that thing right uh, when we start the course in detail what is pod and what how the container will be mapped and how the containers are running all that we will see then what we do auto scaling is a great feature of kubernetes one of the core feature of kubernetes and here what we do we see that how we can auto scale when my traffic is increases right my application will be automatically auto scaled right so scalability is automatically taken care of by within kubernetes as a core feature of kubernetes and we if the photo scaling we would see that when the traffic comes more it will automatically scaling up so it will scale up by adding a node and by creating an instance of the same application so the traffic whole traffic cannot go to a single application it will be distributed right so we do a traffic forwarding by auto scaling and when the traffic reduces during the off hours or night hours right it will do a auto scaling down so scaling up and scaling down will be handled by auto scaling right so we do right horizontal pod auto scaler vertical pod auto scaler all that we will be doing it right so i will talk about this thing probably somewhere down the line right so that is essentially part of the thing what we do other thing then once my cluster is ready and once we test our environment by deploying pod and then we explore the feature as auto scaling then what we do we take a enterprise solution based application and we take our first deployment right so we do our first application on kubernetes cluster and we deploy 
enjoy it, right? And here, what we do, we take a production use case, right? So we take a huge web-based application and we deploy into a Kubernetes cluster, right? So it's a working solution, right? So we here we have a hands-on experience how we can have our application and deploy. So our first application deployment will start from here with a live example, right? So all real-time examples we we do here. Then what we do? Eventually, we do deployment of Nginx web application, right? Nginx is world's fastest web server. We all know, and in Nginx just last few years, couple of years, it is so popular, right? It is so popular. The people also call this as an overnight hit, right? It's a kind of overnight hit, right? So it's right in Bollywood, Hollywood, right? So first day, if the movie is good, it would be a hit, right? So likewise, this guy is also very, very popular. And what we do, we will also deploy. Nginx into our cluster, right? We have already set up cluster, so we will we will deploy Nginx and we will access from external network from outside, right? How other people can access it from outside? So that also we will see how the people can access this Kubernetes cluster from outside. So we will have some experience, right? Because this would be your first experience into the Kubernetes environment, right? So we will give you this platform where you can deploy your application, you can feel of it, and you can access your application from outside. Though the application is running into Kubernetes cluster, right? But for outside people, they don't know, right? So all that. We are going to do it here. Then what happens is manifest for definition file, right? So manifest means we. Uh through automation, right? So what we do, we will have our configuration everything in a much more automated way, and we manage everything. We don't deal with commands, right? So what we do, we create one time, and we use lifetime of concept. And there, what we do, we do through YAML, right? So YAML is the backbone of all the application nowadays. All modern application has inbuilt capability of YAML. YAML uh, is basically an automation uh, uh, tooling concept, right? It's an automation tooling concept, and every tool follows it. And when I say tooling and automation, so that doesn't mean I'm going to write. Some programs, right? So no programming, programming skills are required here. So no prerequisite for that, or even no programming required to learn Kubernetes. What I mean to say, YAML is basically a JSON format. It's a GoLang platform, and we follow JSON format, and it's just a key value pair, right? Just a key value pair, no programming, not even a single line of code. And here we templateize our thing, right? So basically on template base, we complete manage all the things. So I would be creating a pod with a simple YAML template, and there are four core properties: API version, right? Kind metadata and stuff, and using four core properties. We will set up our complete pod YAML file. It's an automated script kind of thing, and it's just a key value pair, right? So don't don't get me wrong here. It's just a key value pair. Then what we do? We will also test this application in a auto scaling mode, right? So we will enable auto scaling, and we will see, and we can also do. Rolling update. Rolling update means my application is running here, and my parallelly my development is also going on. Right? Development is an ongoing thing. Right? At any organization, development is an day in day out. It's an ongoing thing. Right? So what happens is after few months, right, or after a month, right, so development team also come up with a product release, and my application which are running inside the cluster are now on lower version, and development team has come up with a new product release of a higher version of the application. Where they have a new features they have added, they have done lot of enhancements. Right? So I want to upgrade my Application which is running inside my cluster equivalent to the the release version of my development, right? So I want to do that. How to do that? So in Kubernetes, we don't need to bring our product and our environment down. So absolutely, with zero downtime, we can do a rolling update and we can upgrade the application. So it's an internal technique we will explore and we will use and we will do some use cases here, right? So just to experience. So we will be upgrading the application without bringing the application down on the fly, on the go, right? All the applications are running, right? During the running instance of the application, we can even upgrade the application. There's a strategy. To do that, and Kubernetes by default it has it, right? So it's a de facto standard of Kubernetes to do rolling updates. Same way for CPU memory reservation. So inside my pod, what is running? My application is running. That is a container container platform. So containerized application would be running in, inside my pod. So here, what all resources are required for that application to run in a healthy state? Right. So in terms of CPU and memory reservation, so we do all that tracking here and we manage all this. So Kubernetes has a dynamic resource allocation, dynamic resource management, and we can do even reservation. Some application might be needing a standard resource, right? So heavy application they need, for example, four CPUs, right? And Eight GB of RAM, right? So even we can do reservation for application inside the cluster. So, so here we will have some advanced understanding in the Kubernetes cluster. Right? So we'll do all that here. Kubernetes internal and external services. So as I said, Kubernetes is basically a microservice-based architecture, and nowadays every tool follows microservice-based architecture. For faster response, for managing the application much more way and no dependency. The biggest advantage of Microsoft architecture is to eliminate the dependencies. Right, if particular feature is not working, I need not to bring down entire application and to fix that issue and then again restart the application, come come back. Right, so Microsoft service. So services architecture. What we do? 
he slice down each and every feature and break into an independent feature and they will collaborate and from the back end they will be working as an integrated thing. Right? So here we will be learning with services. There are two services internal as well as external. To name a few, we would be learning cluster IP service. Right? We would be exploring with the node port service, very good service where we will provide access to the outside people. So all uh, the complete access can be provided to the whole world and people can be accessing my applications which are running inside the cluster using this service. Load balancer, again a real-time uh, service where we will do a load balancing, how the traffic will come and how my application inside the cluster should not be impacted because of the traffic. Because traffic during the peak hour, it would be flooded. Right? The traffic would be flooded, but my application should be always in a healthy state. So that is the power of Kubernetes orchestration engine. It will, it will never ever overload my application, right? It will always ensure that my applications are running in a much more healthy state, right? So here we will see that we will also explore ingress controller, right? So ingress controller for load balancing and various other features are there. We will do all that thing, right? As a production environment. So here we will be having a complete understanding of that. Then once we have this resource usage monitoring, right? So monitoring is then in production environment, monitoring is again a key feature, right? So monitoring is again a key feature. So how much resources are utilized? What is the current status? What is my performance scale? All that we are going to study here and Kubernetes has a feature so probably in today's session we will explore to some extent this feature also. Resource quota as I just explained in my previous point that resource allocation resource quota also be, can be handled dynamically in Kubernetes in terms of utilization memory so what is the load what is the stress created out of my application all that can be taken care under this resource quota right and here we take production usage to have a much more understanding on that right so scenario with a real time example right working example we will take it here. Then we will also learn Kubernetes jobs, right? So essentially there are few types of jobs, right? So there are two types of jobs. One type of job is I want to run it now and complete my task, right? I have a specific task and for that I will create a job and I will do it. So that is called an ad hoc job. Another type of job which I want to do but at a periodic interval, right? At a, at a periodic interval, at a certain time, let's say nightly. So I want to run some jobs, right? So during my nightly build or nightly activity, I want to run. Or there are some data which is coming from my telemetry data, right? It is coming from my sensor, right? My OT data, right? Which I want to pump in, right? So what we do? We create a scheduled job. And what this scheduled job does? So when scheduling comes, right? So periodic job you have to run after 10 minutes, after 30 minutes, or after every nightly and particular time, right? So this is basically daily jobs which we do. And when you schedule any job, what we call, we call crone jobs, right? So there are two types of ad hoc job and crone job. So we will be learning extensively here and these jobs have their own controller and these are fantastic things to complete your task in a much more matured and automated way. So we are going to learn that also. Secret management, so we already have our encrypted data store. Right, and we will see all my secrets in terms of my password, my token, my credentials, everything will be stored under ETCD. Right, and ETCD, my current state of cluster information will also be stored under ETCD. Right, we will talk about that thing when we learn this course. So, during that, so we will share what we do. We will see how we can manage our secrets. Right, so here we will be creating our own secrets as it is highlighted here. Right, we would be creating our own secrets encrypted and we can do encryption also, and ultimately it will be stored here. And inside application, we will just use those secrets, right? And encryption through encryption, it will be automatically passed, right? So token information, everything will be passed through API, right? So all that can be, we will be exploring it here. Config map, config map is again and one uh, interesting concept. It's again Kubernetes API resource, right? It's a type of Kubernetes API resource. I can create as the name indicates. I can manage my configurations and I can map it to my ongoing running application, right? So I can map it to running application. Let's say nowadays what happens, all these gaming application, all these applications there, runtime I want to change the background of it, right? I want to change, by default it would be a blue color, but I want to change it to some other color, right? This might be, so dynamically what we do, we have some applets, we click and we change it, right? There might be fonts also which I want to change, or if it's a gaming application, right, and I also want to play, multiple players they want, they want to call by their name. So what I will do, I'll go, I can give, I can give my name that, okay, I am playing this game and we can form a group, right. So these are the dynamic configurations which we can directly map to the ongoing application, right. So once my gaming applications are up, we can pass all this information, there are some property files which we want to change dynamically. So all that we can do through config map, right. Again, it's a very good concept. So using environment variables, we can pass the information into a 
production application which are already there. Okay? So we will do all that things here. Daemon sets, it's again Kubernetes API object. Daemon sets is again a very, very good concept. What we do daemon sets, so when we have application, right? The applications are running on my worker node, right? And I, what I want, I want to have some agents also running on my worker node so that we got the production environment. So there would be, I would be ensuring that uh, each and every worker node has its own antivirus agent, right? So antivirus should be running here. I may have that some monitoring tools agent should also be running so that I should know the health of my worker node. I should know the performance of my application. So daemon set will do all that job. And when even we delete the application, there are some traces of application which remain. So it will also call as a garbage collector, right? So all that we will see and it's going to be a very, very good concept, right? So by defect, this is also used. So as, as soon as your node is running the cluster, we will ensure that my basic requirement is that antivirus, my monitoring agent, my logging agent, everything should be by default. It should be there when the moment the node is running the cluster. So we will see all that in a much more, much more use cases. We will take few use cases and we will see that. Right? So normally Prometheus and we do some monitoring tool and all that and even antivirus tools and we will see that. Kubernetes networking. So it's again an essential. It's a cluster based application. So by default, networking has to be there. Without that, we cannot create cluster. But the point is Kubernetes doesn't sit on the existing or a base network. Kubernetes always go ahead and create its own network, right? So there are various pod networking, various partners, rather I would say various partners who are working with Kubernetes as a collaborative partner and we can also use their partner services. So I can, there are many Kubernetes networking such as Calico, Flannel, Calico, Juniper, Deepnet, right? All that thing we will be using it. We will also be creating cluster by using networking. Volumes and storage, so on persistent data, right? So it's a production environment, so persistent data. For persistent data, we have to store in a volume or a storage, right? So Kubernetes has a persistent volume and persistent volume claim, right? And we can have static and dynamic thing where I can store my information and those information I can attach to my pod and whatever that I generated inside the pod, I can put it on my volume and my managed services or my IT supporting, they will take a nightly backup from this thing so my data is protected. Why? Because in this modern world, data is the most expensive thing than any other thing in this world, right? So we will manage our data by using volumes and storage here. Helm installation, right? So Helm installation is also, we have included here, right? Helm installation, right? We have included, which is basically an add-on because people, we want to experience because by this time, people will be learning experience things. So this is not part of certification, but we have added from our side, from MindMagic, we have added this thing so that we can give the people a real experience. So what is Helm? So you must have heard about Helm Start, right? So in version, version latest version, this is 3.0. So we have, it has completely, they have changed the architecture of Helm. And now the pillar concept is removed and it is a very simplified architecture. So we, what we do, we do installation and we give experience, right? So what is Helm actually? So to give you information about Helm, Helm is the basically de facto standard of Kubernetes packaging, right? So Kubernetes package manager, I would say in other words, right? So it's a Kubernetes package manager where Kubernetes will package the application, right? Because when you want to deliver your application to somebody else, how will you deliver? You have to package that application, then only you will deliver. So Kubernetes also used as a de facto standard by having Helm in place and this Helm will help Kubernetes to manage the packages, right? So all my YAML files, all my, my applications, right? All configuration, everything will package into a, a single package and that we can ship it right so it's a big, basically a package manager for kubernetes right who would be managing all packages it's going to be very very interesting if i get time today i will also demonstrate then we have a blue green deployment it's a very popular uh, deployment strategy nowadays people follow in production right so previously we used to have master and slave deployment strategy where master is the active thing and slave is the passive thing which will be having a, the exact replica of the production but it is not active it is in passive mode and it is it it will sync up all transition from the master and if my master goes down, we can promote the slave and slave will take and slave is exactly the copy of that thing, right? So we will slave will come into the production. But here we use even further advanced things rather than master slave. What we use? Master master, right? So we don't use master slave, rather we use master master. So here we will see how we can have blue green deployment and it's going to be very, very for thing when you do a rolling update. Right? So my development team is coming with the new releases and in blue I may have my current release and upgrade release. I can do that. So we have some technical some concept here some technological concepts and there we will also study and see how we can use this blue green deployment it is also called as a canary deployment in other words but nowadays it is famous by blue and green deployment liveness and readiness probe so basically it's a certification there is a module called as observability 
right? Observe ability under observe ability, what you do? We check the live the live status of my application, right? So we have a liveliness pod, and what we do here we check by whether my application is alive or not, or it is dead, right? So normally it's a self test which is running every internet periodic uh, health check it will do it will go and it will check whether application is alive or not right so this is kind of that readiness right so when application is accepting the traffic from outside right so rest api they take the traffic from outside they will go back and they will collect the response and give it to the end user or the host right who is accessing my application so it will go and it will Intermittently, it will go and it will check whether application is still in ready or not. Whether application is still ready or not, right? So it will always see that my application should always be up and running and should be always in a ready state. There are internal probes which we do and we check the whether my application is alive, whether my application is ready or not. So all that we do through a probe mechanism, right? So here we do even a hands-on thing and we see with various examples, right? We even check and we will create and we will see Kubernetes cluster. Right, so use multi environment. So in Kubernetes cluster, single cluster can be accessed by various teams. Right, so single cluster can be accessed by my dev team, which is development team, QA team, which is my quality engineering team, staging team, right, various other teams, or my production team, right, prod team. So all that they can work on the same cluster without interfering the other. Right, so there is a concept in Kubernetes, and we use all that by using namespace, namespace doing isolation, and I can create separate namespace for dev, separate namespace for QA, separate staging, production, and within their own isolation within their own boundaries they can be still working together on single cluster and that is how we create our CICD pipeline everybody is stitched together in a holistic way as a pipeline way and everybody is working parallelly right and that is the thing and here also we will see and we will understand this concept Kubernetes app services right so normally we do installation on bare metal as I said from ground zero we build right how my master node component will be built how my worker node will be, will be built and how we can create a cluster and how they can communicate when we deploy applications right but nowadays Kubernetes has already entered into a mainstream market. Right? What does that mean? Mainstream market means Kubernetes nobody can live without Kubernetes. Nobody can skip it. Right. So it has to be there because it is already entered into a mainstream market, Kubernetes, right? In just last few years. Right. So there are various partner, all big shops, right? So Microsoft, they are using Azure, which is we called as ATS, Azure Kubernetes Services. So they use SAS model, right? So it's a pre clustered environment which they have as a service. So you have to just go start the service and start consuming the cluster. So it's a default three node cluster, which is ready for you, right? So you can use that. So ATS. Similarly for Google, Google uh, we also have DK, which is called as Google Kubernetes Engine. This comes from Google. We also have EKS, Elastic Kubernetes Services from AWS, Elastic Kubernetes Services from AWS, all that. So we will see how we can have this right as a service app model and we have some understanding here, right? So we will go and we will explore and we will see what is different between bare metal. But from certification, right? So the more weightage is given to installation, 12% weightage given to installation. So that is the reason we will do practically from ground zero, we will pick up one node then another node another node and we will logically group them then we will create our cluster by installing right all the things and we will set up right the production environment okay right? so there are some practice labs also where we will give you the access and all the training right so all whatever we are discussed is purely based on hands-on right so purely based on hands-on and we do a lot of assignments here right a lot of assignments projects here you can learn the thing before you get onto a real-time exposure right so we will give you that experience here itself before right you are preparing for a job change or you are preparing to take up a role switch right current profile to another advanced profile when you go to right you should be have hands-on experience so till that level that that speed will bring you right so that's the expectation from mind magic and will bring you to that speed right so that is what we do here right so a lot of things we do it here now let's talk about something about today's agenda or what we are going to do in today's demo session so we are going to learn about kubernetes here in today's agenda right and i will give you a fun ride on kubernetes right so we'll have a fun ride with kubernetes so we'll do something in kubernetes and we will we will have a ride on kubernetes and experience how kubernetes look like so we'll do that so in that what we are going to do so kubernetes minikube installation so i will go ahead and i will install kubernetes minikube right so it's a single node cluster right for mostly for development and testing we see a single node cluster normally what happens in home we don't have multiple machines right so and we cannot it is not possible to logically group when we don't have machines right but what kubernetes says is no need to worry still you can go ahead and create your kubernetes cluster environment on a single node right let's say we have our own personal laptop at home or we may have our home computer laptop we can even go ahead and we can create our virtualized environment of kubernetes cluster on a single node that is called as a mini cube installation right so it's basically so we will do installation and what is what it requires we need the pre 
prerequisite is docker why docker because kubernetes in kubernetes we cannot create containers kubernetes has no capability to create containers on its own so we need a container tool right so docker is container tool which is very very popular and it is easily available as a open source public domain so we will use that prerequisite so we will install docker also then we will set up right we also set up minikube cluster Right. We will install Kubernetes command line so that we can do some operations here. So kubectl is the de facto standard of Kubernetes command line. So we will install that also. Then we will create the single node cluster which is my minikube. So my cluster will be ready here. Minikube cluster and we will start this minikube cluster. Right. So my cluster is now ready to go. Right. So now I can start deploying application. So I am going to give you this experience in this session. So let me quickly go and do this installation and give you this thing fun ride to Kubernetes. So let's have this ride on Kubernetes. So all the installations we do on on AWS, right? So all cloud we use. So for all installation learning. So if you know cloud, well and good. If you don't know, we will be teaching you cloud also, right? As a free complementary course, and we will be teaching you even even cloud. So what all basic things are required? That basic thing we are going to cover, and we will set up all our cluster environment on AWS cloud, right? Both Minikube and production cluster. Both we are we use AWS. So AWS is our default standard, and we will be learning. Linux and Ubuntu we use as I said this is the default choice right so if you know Linux and Ubuntu which is fine if you don't know don't worry about it that is also included as a part of this course and we will take care that you should come to the speed in Linux and Ubuntu so we will train you for that YAML thing as I said for automation side and Kubernetes de facto YAML is every day from day one so for that also what we do we are going to teach you YAML thing on the fly on the go right so we will make you comfortable so nothing no prerequisites are required. Right, so anybody can learn Kubernetes, and for you also, what all things are required to bring you to the speed, we will teach you as a part of this course. Right, so let me quickly go and create things. So go to running instances. Let me say click launch. It's a AWS. Right, so it's, I have already logged in. Right, so my name is here, and for you also, I'll guide you to create your own account, free account, and we will use that thing. Right, so let me quickly take. So Kubernetes, we need two CPU, and right, so two CPU is the requirement for Kubernetes. So let me quickly go and take that. Only one instance is enough, so we are okay with that. It's a single node instance, so we'll use that. Right, so Kubernetes, we have default port number. Kubernetes default port number is six four four three. Very easy to remember. Four four three, we are we are already aware. So six four four three is Kubernetes default port number. Right, I'm saying zero dot zero means it is open for each and everyone. Anybody can use it. So let me say login with my key. So here we don't use login and password. We use SSH key, which is much more secured. Password we forget very easily. These keys, right? These are 256 characters and very easily nobody can hack it, right? So that way it's much more protective. Right? Let me name this machine as my mini cube. Right, and this will take few minutes, so it is getting initialized. Right, so it will come, and this indicator will say yellow. Till yellow, we will not get this button to connect to this machine, so it is grey. The moment this machine will be ready, right? Currently, it is getting initialized. It is being initialized here. When the machine would be ready, it would turn the indicator from yellow to green. That means it is ready to use, and that time we will also see this connect button enabled. As soon as the it change the indicator from yellow to green, this button will be activated for us, and we will use. Mobile XM to connect to this thing, and we will do the installation. It's ready to use. The indicator has been changed to green now, and my connect button is also enabled. So here, already we discussed in the last session, but I'll quickly give you thing. You can connect through open SSH client, any client. So I'm using mobile XM client, which is very popular nowadays, and a lot of these features are there. So we'll use that. You can also use Putty. Putty is the old way of connecting to Linux boxes, and you can take the console and take the control of that, and you can do whatever you want. You can use that if you are comfortable, right? Then locate to your DevOps key, which is my login step by SSH token, right? So I use my SSH key to login, so which is there. Give 400 permission to your key because we want to log in, so give a viewable permission or read permission. How to give that by using ch mode command 400, and this is the command to connect, right? So already I have this thing, so just copy this guy and paste it in your mobile action, right? So this is my thing. I've already given this command ch mode 400. 
let me paste it here so what i will do i will just connect to this thing and i am going to install so this is basically a default user of aws right ubuntu but for installation we cannot do installation by a normal user we need admin privileges for so i will login with the root user and this is the command sudo as you mean super user give hyphen right i've logged in with the root user right so let me clear the screen we don't need all these information so let me clear the screen by clear command so that we get more space i have to install docker first right so let me go to my slide so for minikube installation please repeat it is docker right so let me quickly install this is ubuntu machine so we will use apt get apt get command here apt get update right i will also club another command by ampersand ampersand and give another command so apt get install i want to install what i want to install i want to install docker so docker dot i is the package name and by default i will give hyphen yes yes so that is the not asking question so i'm installing docker it will take less than a minute again few seconds and then we'll install it right meanwhile the installation is happening so what we do how we are going to install let me explain it so for installation docker dependency i'm installing docker new dependency so docker is being getting installed right so docker is being installed now then i will right so for minikube i will download through curl right so through curl i will download so this is my location right and this is the thing so this is basically developed by google right so this is a google tool they have released on a public domain they have not donated to public domain but is developed by google so i'll go and download this minikube installer from here directly from here so single command installation so let me quickly go and do that so my docker is done let me quickly check my docker so docker hyphen hyphen version before i move ahead let me quickly check so my docker is installed can you see the version docker 19.03 is installed here right so my docker is installed let me quickly go here and install uh, download this minikube so it is getting downloaded so it is downloaded 100% right received yes 100% received right anything missed no 000 uploaded yes done right what was the size this was the size and this was the speed so it has been downloaded 100% right so 100% was the total and for we also got the same size right what was the size 15.7 mb right for the size and same size we also got it so absolutely it's fine right we can go ahead and we can do that right and what we do we'll create some directories here right where we will be doing the installation so let me quickly go that or let me clear this thing Right, so it will go. It's all already there. Right, we need not to create. It's already there in Ubuntu. But just to ensure, why I'm using sudo? Sudo no need to use. Already we are into root user. If you are not a root user, then you use sudo. You can directly use this command. Right, so don't get confused about that. Right, so let me do. Now I will install my minikube. Right, so I will now install minikube. We have already have the to call command. We have already downloaded thing. Right, so if I go and see here. so this is what we just downloaded minikube from our think from our previous command right from this command we already downloaded so now let me go and install it so sudo you can give right and install what you want to install i want to install minikube right so copy paste right and let me also give this path which we have just created right so my uh, installation minikube right it's just a binary file so it is already installed right so we have done the installation minikube installation so before that minikube docker is done so let me install kubernetes command line also which is qptl so let me go quickly and install that so it's a ubuntu machine so let me use snap and i will use qptl classic Right, so let me quickly go and install that. I have to say install, right? So I have to say click it will install. So it will go and it will install. So it is download and will install. So my installation is done. Can you see this tick mark here? So my click it will also install here, right? So we can install our thing. And one more thing. So let me also install one. packages linux packages so that we can interact with it so let me quickly go and say uh, 
okay we will see needed or not so that's fine so oh, let me say sudo it's ubuntu machine so i will say sudo apt-get install and let me install this guy and i will say yes yes so that it should not ask me any question let me go and install so basically it's a package like on linux environment package so that we can interact with the things right so we have installed it so i have installed this package so i think we are good here my mini cube is also installed right so mini cube is also installed let me quickly go and start my mini cube right so i will refer my slide again right so what we did we installed docker we installed cube ctl now we can start our mini cube right so we can create our cluster and we can start our mini cube right so let me go and start my kubernetes uh, mini cube so mini cube again the main command line is mini cube itself so mini cube is my main command line here right and i would say mini cube start right and it will ask me for driver and what i would say none right so by default i have docker so it should talk to that and now what is happening it is installing my mini cube right so we are installing mini cube right so single node cluster so if you see it here mini right mini cube cluster we are installing right so mini cube in cluster we are getting installed so it will take few minutes right i think uh, less than a minute it will go and it will do it so it is installing all that so if you see it is qvdm qctl all that components bringing and it looks for docker so my docker is also installed that was a prerequisite for docker and kubernetes version is 1.18.3 which what we are going to do right so my mini cube is also installed here right so my mini cube cluster is also installed here right so mini cube right i can now use any mini cube command or kubectl i use kubectl command line also so my mini cube configuration is done right so my mini cube is installed so let me quickly clear the screen and what i wanted to show it here so let me say mini cube so mini cube is our main command line when you install mini cube right so or everything we will be revolving around so let me say mini cube status so i'm just checking the status so my mini cube cluster here yes, it's a control plane right so it's my control plane right so we have a control plane which will create which we have created all my cluster environment component it is running what is the status it is running kubelet is also running api server is also running kube config is already configured right so my mini cube is cluster is set right so this way we can set up our mini cube thing or if you further one through kube ctl we have installed so kube ctl and let me quickly check my cluster info so i would say cluster right so my master node is running so my mini cube is up and running right so my kubernetes master node is running my code dns is running so that way our mini cube cluster is set up right so that is what we wanted to demonstrate here so our mini cube cluster is ready now so we can use it right so we will do all that thing so this was the fun ride of kubernetes let's move quickly ahead with kubernetes thing so let's understand with kubernetes what is kubernetes kubernetes introduction so kubernetes basically an open source tool so it is developed by google right so google literally in 2013 when docker thing came right it was a revolutionary phase with the docker and kube right? docker is basically synonym with container i can say container or docker both are same when i say docker means again it's a container thing only so it was a revolutionary phase came right and kubernetes every day they are running around millions and billions of containers so all kubernetes applications are running inside the container right so when you say www.google.com so it will open google page on your browser but where it is hosted it is all running in container environment right so google is managing millions and millions of instances in a container base right and when you when anybody across the globe we when we say www.google.com he will get that page and when we want to look for information we pass on the word on the search engine and search engine will give us all references links all information right so anybody can use it right because they have a huge setup of all these applications which are running so google engine is running in container environment so google every day runs around millions and billions of containers so it is really tricky for them to manage right each and every container application if something is going down something is not coming up something already stopped somebody is not taking the response somebody is down somebody is up right so it is really tedious to track each and every millions of container it physically it manually if i go and track it will take years and right months days months and years for me to even go and track because there are millions 
engines and generate of applications are running. So they come up with the orchestration engine. This engine, what it will do? If my application goes down, this engine will bring it back, right? So kind of a orchestration engine. That is the property of orchestration engine, right? So uh, Google. That time they didn't have any other tool which is available in the market. So what they do? So Google engineers they sat and they automate each and every process. So they wrote down one by one, one by one, one by one, one by one, one, by one process, process, process one, process two, process three, like that hundreds of processes and they automate entire thing and they come up with a tool called as a Kubernetes. Right? So Kubernetes basically in a degree we call it as a pilot. Right? It's a called as a pilot who is basically leading the ship. Right? Who is leading the cruise? Who is leading my aircraft? Right? For destination he knows the route. Nobody else. Right? So he is the driving. Force, right so here also kubernetes kubernetes is driving all that thing as it's one power of orchestration engine and later than google they denoted this tool to open source community right so it's publicly available available in public domain right so that's the power of kubernetes so kubernetes is an open source tool developed by google and orchestration engine for managing containerized application over clusters of machines right so up till huge range up till 5000 machines you can connect in a single cluster 5000 machines right so i just guys, please remember 5,000 machines in a single cluster. It's again an interview question. Normally people will ask you. Once you will be trained out of it, though we will have mock tests and all that thing, we will prepare you for interview. Each and every module, we give a lot of information related to that particular topic or that particular module, right? So, we will be preparing for that also. So, it's again a fat question. How many machines you can connect in a single Kubernetes cluster? So, that is up to 5000 machines you can connect right it's a huge and that's the reason netflix when initially it came so netflix was their target was if they are able to run the netflix application across the us states they are good enough right so they the company will come into profitable and they will be very productive and they will be happy happy go guys in the world and lot of revenue they will be generating and whatever investment they have done so completely roi will be covered and they will recover all that thing and company will come into a profitable profitable mode right so all that they plan but now google the netflix is across the continent people are using in asia pacific in entire europe middle east right so across the continent we are using and not only particular location we have to go and use this application right i need not to go to multiplex or see cineplex to go and see a movie or a web series I can play it wherever I am, whether I'm driving a car or I'm traveling in a bus or I'm boarded in a train or I'm flying on the aircraft, right, on the air, right. So all that we can play because there is a huge infrastructure managed by a tool like Kubernetes, right. So now every big player, they are looking to make their application. They want to expose their application into a global environment, right. So they can reach to a, across the continent people, across the Continent can use their application like banking application, gaming application, online training, right? So business portals, right? Their product catalog they want to publish. So people do a very lot of business model which has come up because of this modern technology, right? So that is how we use, right? So this is all about Kubernetes and why Kubernetes is so popular these days because of its self healing capability. So in middle of night my application has stopped. So it will not wait wait for me until next day I will go to the office and go to my data center and look at my application. Oh, middle of night 2 a.m. some application went wrong and this application stopped. So I have to go physically uh, fix the issue then I will bring back this application back to the cluster then this application will be up and running. So I lost that productivity, right? From 2 a.m. till morning, till I go and make this application again back up and running. So till that, I have lost the productivity. But Kubernetes will not wait for that. Kubernetes internally does a continuous monitoring, and it will ensure that as and when my application goes on, immediately it will bring back. That way, it is. In other words, I would say it will maintain the state of my cluster all the time, 24 by 7, 365 days. My state of the cluster would maintain. When I say state of cluster means let's say hundreds of applications are running, hundred ports are deployed. So one of application has gone down middle of the night. Some issue has happened. Might be hardware failure or something has happened and the application is not coming back, coming up. So what will happen? My state will change from 100 to 99 because one application is down. So Kubernetes will ensure that my state of cluster will remain at the same level. Right? 100 means 100 applications should run all the time 24 by 7. 365 days. So what it will do? It has a self healing capability. It will heal the application and bring back this application. If it is not able to bring back that application, it will create another instance of the application and deploy into the cluster. A new instance will be deployed. So the traffic can be routed and forwarded to that instance, not to the dead instance, to the new instance which is now again active. Right? So that is the self healing capability of Kubernetes. So all that we are going to learn post at Mind Magic. Right? We are going to learn that. Automated rollback. As I said, development is a continuous thing. Development people, they come a monthly release or a three months or a half yearly release and as and when they come with a product release i also want to upgrade my applications which are running right so normally when we give customer application and we also 
So releases, patches, upgraded application, right? So we deploy this application. Customer business, we don't want to disturb their productivity. We want to help them to enhance their productivity, not to degrade their productivity. So the applications are running and we are pushing the application with the upgrade also. So it's the Kubernetes has a very good feature, right? So if I previously what used to happen in traditional model, we have to bring down the application. There is a complete planned maintenance activity and we have to bring our business and we have to lose our business during those number of hours because there is no business we are doing, zero cost. But here in Kubernetes, because of Kubernetes, we have eliminated that kind of shutdown, maintenance and all that and we can on the fly, on the go, we can even upgrade the application by rolling updates, right? And if my rolling update is creating problem, I realize that, okay, this new upgrade is not up to the mark and I am not happy with it. I can even roll back to the previous state and I can fix this new latest change in the background. Right, so I can do even that thing. Switching is also allowed. Photo scaling, I already spoke about. When the traffic increases, every application when it deploys into Kubernetes cluster, by default Kubernetes will take care of scalability. Right, and that is the thing everybody looks for when we release a product. What we look for that when people demand in the market and my application is up and running. Right, so for banking application, right, every week by week they are increasing the customer base. Right, many people are getting added to their under their banking application. Right, so they are having huge customer base and they are increasing. Right, and everybody would like to increase their business in the same way, same fashion. So what happens is when you deploy into Kubernetes cluster, my application will by default automatically will have a scalability feature enabled by Kubernetes. So it will be taken care by Kubernetes when the traffic will come, it will deploy another instance and traffic can be routed to other instance of the application so that it should whole flooded traffic should not be flooded to my single application. Otherwise it will start burning and eventually more and more traffic is coming, it will die soon, which I don't want. Kubernetes ensure that application will be running in a healthy state. That is number one. And how? By doing this auto scaling, it will route the traffic to other and it will not disturb the health of this guy, right? So we have this thing. Load balancing, yes. So before the traffic comes, right? If you see a node and all my applications are running, right? In cluster, multiple instance applications are running. So I can do a load balancing. This circle, small circle, I do a load balancing here. I know whom to traffic, whom to send the traffic to this node or this application or this application, right? So this application or this application or this application. So we have a load balancing and this load balancing will filter the traffic and accordingly will pass on the traffic. So that way we have a mechanism in place before hitting my environment, we can handle the traffic in a much more efficient way, in a much more matured way, right? So that, that is what load balancing is. So these are the few only core features there are the list is huge, we cannot talk in the one session, so that is the thing we have it here, but we are going to learn everything under mind magic. Now let's quickly have an idea about Kubernetes architecture. So this is basically a master and worker node architecture. So we have a master node, we have worker node, so there are three worker nodes, and we have a horizontal is my master, and these are vertical are my worker nodes, right? So a master node, we have few components. Master node is responsible to manage the entire cluster. So it's a self-managed cluster. As I said, middle of night something goes wrong, it will not wait for me or you. It will automatically, because it's a self-managed cluster, it will heal automatically, it will manage my state of cluster at the same level, right? So it has that power. And who is helping master nodes? So we have ETCD, which is an encrypted data store, all my secrets and confidential token possibility store, API server, which will manage my entire cluster. It has own scheduler, where scheduler is keeping track of the node, who is doing what. Right, so kind of discovery and we can plan our deployments here. Controller manager, master node has various controllers where he can control the cluster. Right, so he has various controllers, whether it's a pod controller or a job controller or a config map controller, domain set controller, so various replica set controllers. We have a controller to manage the cluster and these controllers will take care of, right, creating the instances, right, so replica, creating the replicas of the instances, creating the deployment, rolling updates, right and monitoring so kubernetes has a huge range of controller manager and this control manager will manage all kind of operations right self-filling monitoring upgrade right scaling auto scaling all that worker nodes worker node basically if you see every worker node has two components kubelet and kube proxy kubelet and kube proxy kubelet and kube proxy and each node will have its own kubelet and proxy proxy is basically a firewall kind of thing so when the traffic will come it will do a filtering if the request is authorized request it will allow to access my application which are running inside my pod and container if the request is not authorized it will reject it so it's kind of a firewall thing. Kubelet is basically an agent who is running and managing this entire resource. It will very closely working with master nodes. It will take the task from master nodes and all the application will be running accordingly. And it will do the thing here, start the application, right, create the pod, deploy the application. And it has to go back and update the status back to the master, right. All that happens and we will also see when we create our own thing, right. So I'll show you and we will come to this slide and we will do mapping one to one so that you can understand, right. So all that we can be done here. So this is just a, this to give you a fair idea, fair idea about architecture. It's going to be very, very interesting and very, very simple.
Kubernetes, right? Though it looks complicated, but not complicated. It's a very, very simplified architecture, very, very simple way to learn it. But you need a expert who can train you and who can take you through all these things, right? So Mind Magic has that capability. So let's move forward. So what we do in, in our production environment, right? So we, as I said, Mind Magic is the platform. We are the global platform provider where we will give you this opportunity to do, have a, your own production cluster created and you can have hands-on on the production environment so that tomorrow when you get into a job or a new role, you should not feel that, okay, whatever we have learned, we are not able to do it. So we will prepare you to that level. So that is the expectation for Mind Magic, right? So we will bring you to that speed. And what we do here, to so just give you a small example, we have already have this created for you. And how we are going to use in our lab, Mind Magic lab, we will show you. Right? So I have already created this cluster for you. What we do? As I said, we create Kubernetes cluster on a bare metal. Bare metal means just the metal, nothing is there. So nothing is there. So I will build, we will build our master node, worker node, right? You worker node and we logically group them and create a cluster. Then we need, need what are master node component, what are worker node component. Component in the sense, these component, each CPD, each are these are the master node component. Right, how this component will be created, how they will be connected, how they will form a cluster. Right, so this white background is nothing but my cluster. How they will be connected, how they will be talking to each other. Right, so this is the solution. All your answers will be answered by once I create this environment production cluster for you. Right, so we will create this cluster by having master and worker nodes here. So basically, it's a multi node cluster. The previous which, which I just demonstrated few minutes ago, that was a mini cube cluster, a single node cluster, which we normally use for development and testing purpose but for production we don't use single node cluster because scalability and all those advanced features are not there i cannot achieve in single node cluster in mini cube so i have to have a production based cluster so that is what we are talking about here here multi node cluster and it's a my production environment so we already do and we set up nginx web application right so there will be four instances of application and what we do we do continuous monitoring so let me give you a walkthrough on this thing how we set up i have already set it up for you if you look at my aws thing you must have noticed it when i was creating minikube let me go to my dashboard so i already have this cluster i have my master node i have worker node one worker node two so i already have this cluster for you right and you know this minikube minikube just i've created for you we have already see so this I've already created for you. Let me go to the thing. So this is my master node, worker node 1, worker node 2, and this is the mini cube which we did, right? So I will just go to my master node, cube ctl get node. So this is, cube ctl is our de facto command line interface for Kubernetes, right? So cube, cube ctl, all commands and Kubernetes will manage all entire cluster operations to cube ctl, right? And get nodes, right? I want to see the list of nodes. So this is the command get node. So when you see the node, so what you see, I have my master node, which is having a role, right? So this is the header. So when you fire this command, this is the header, name, status, role, age, and version. So this is my Kubernetes version, 1.18.3, this is the most recent version which we have. This one, we use all latest versions. We don't use any legacy version, all latest things at MindMagic, right? So we have a master node, and I have a worker node, and I have a three node cluster which I've created for today's demonstration. So we have a three node cluster which we have created for you. Right. right. So let me quickly go and deploy here. So what we are going to deploy, let me go to the slide. We will deploy Nginx, right? And there will be four instances of Nginx, right? So how to deploy, we will see that. So already I have file for you. Let me go to that file. So I already have a file, deployment file I've created. This is a YAML as I mentioned, key value pair, right? So this is my key, left hand side of the colon is my key. This is colon is the differentiator here. Left hand side is my key and right hand side of my colon is basically value, right? So it is like something like this. API version is equal to, I can give any any name, right? So here we are using app v1 or I can say 1.0, right? So instead of is equal to sign, instead of is equal to sign in YAML, what we use? We use colon, right? So like all these are key value pair things, right? So all these things are key value pair things. So let me quickly go and create this thing. What I'm going to create? A mind magic. Right, I'm going to create a mind magic deployment and what I'm going to use, let me see what is image we are using here. So we are using Nginx, right? So we are going to create Nginx. We will talk all about YAML, YAML file, deployment file. Don't worry about it. Everything we will talk in the training. So let me quickly create our deployment the definition dot file, YAML file. Right, this is the naming standard we follow. Definition file, you can create with directly with the YAML thing. That is also fine, but we find industry standard, right? So when we create all these, we follow industry standards at MindMagic, right? So because it's a production environment, right? You can create this table like that. 
so I've created it. Let me copy paste that. So I've copy pasted it. Right. We will talk about all that thing for this file. I'm going to create four replicas here. Right. So four instances of my Nginx. I'm going to create it here. So I've created this file. Now let me go and apply this file. So kubectl apply. I can F. F means file. This file I want to apply. I want to apply this deployment file which I just created. So my deployment is created, right? Mind magic, the name which I gave mind magic is created. So my, my mind magic is created. Now if I want to see kubectl get pods, right? So I should see all the pods which are created. Can you see the pods? Four pods are created because in my file, cat my deployment file. So there are four replicas which we wanted to do and what thing we wanted to create our Nginx container, right? So we have created container, right? And this is the name of my Nginx thing which we have created. So kubectl get pod. So we have these pods are created. And if I want to see where they are deployed, so it's just say hyphen O output and wide. So it will give you a little more wider output when you give this thing. So can you see the IP address for this pod which is created one, which is having this IP address, second IP address, third IP address. These are my pod IP address. And where they are deployed, they are deployed on this node. If I say here kubectl get node, so these are my worker node, right? So worker node will have will not have any role, right? Only master will have a role. This guy will not have a role, so they will have a none. This is my master. So this is deployed on this node 230. Can you see it here? And I have another worker node which is 233, 230 and double three. So this is double three, right? So it is here. So this is 57 230 and this is 61. 2233 right and this is my master node so master node we don't deploy pod so pod deploy so there were four so can you see the how the load balancing has been done these two pods are deployed on these two nodes and these two pods are deployed on these two nodes right so equal amount of load has been shared on these two worker nodes worker node one has two pods worker node has these two pods if i want to test this thing so let me go what is the ip address ip address will always be in sequence 235 one 93, 94 for this particular node and this another worker node will have its own sequence 65 and 66 right so let me go to this worker node and test it so 57 where is 57 can you see this IP address 57230 57230 so let me go here press Q key clear the screen this is my worker node and I will say curl and let me say so my Nginx is running here right so if you see this message, that means the Nginx web server is successfully installed and working fine. Right? Similarly, I can go and run this guy also here. Curl command and give the IP address. It's a web-based application. So my Nginx is also running here. Right? So both 93 and 94. So this is 93. Right? And this is 94. Right. So both the pods are deployed here successfully and they are running fine. Right. So I'll go from here. I'll test another two pods which are from here. Right. And let me go 233. So 233 is my this machine. Worker node 1. Here also I'll give the IP address of that pod and this is Nginx pod. So we can go and we can test it. So Nginx is also running here. Right, so like this we can go and we can test and what was another IP address so 63 and 66 so instead of 65 I can say 66 so 66 is also running fine so my Nginx web server is successfully running right so very quickly we can use all that thing in our our deployment right so I've created this deployment right now what I want to tell you here is so kubectl get pod right so there are four pods which are running, right? And these are continuously monitored. Let's say in middle of night something has happened and it gets is not coming up. So what I will do, I'll create that scenario for you to understand kubectl. I will delete this pod. So right? this pod, the name, I will take this name. Let me delete this pod. Right? So this is being deleted. Out of four, I'm deleting one. So how many should be running? Three. But it will not wait for anybody else. Right, it will not wait for anyone. Let me delete one pod. Kubectl delete pod, and what is the name of the pod? So let's say I want to delete the last one. First and last, I want to delete. So out of four, I have deleted two. So how much should be running? Two and two are deleted. But Kubernetes is doing a continuous monitoring. 
So it will bring back that that two pods. So I imagine that middle of night these two pods have some issue and they have gone down. So now here I have deleted it to create the scenario. But assuming some something happened and they have gone down, but Kubernetes will not wait until next day morning I go to the office or the support team will go go and look at it. Right. So now if I say kubectl get pod, right, you will see that four pods are running. Right, so I deleted this pod. So this pod is now come up by somebody else. Can you see 53 seconds? So all these were created at the same time, 3 minutes 49 seconds. But I deleted one pod which was recreated immediately. And last pod also I deleted, so it will also come back. So this this pod, right? So out of four, right? So which one is running? So this pod is still running from last three minutes for so last four minutes. So yes. What was the other pod? This pod I didn't delete. Right. So this middle one pod, they are still running there. Right, I deleted this pod. I first deleted this got recreated. This pod also got recreated. Right, so if we do, it does a continuous monitoring of the pod. Something goes down, it will bring it back automatically. So that's the power of Kubernetes. Right, so that is what I wanted to show here. Right, so continuous monitoring of a pod, and we can see it live. So I just saw the right rolling update horizontal auto scaler. Right, so we will cover up this part. So in the same product, we do all this thing also. Right, so like that, we do all that thing. Right, so because of time. Right. So because of time current, we will keep this part and we will cover up this part later. Course technology in market, right? So what is the power of this Kubernetes? Let's understand that the scope of the Kubernetes is already a mainstream application. So Kubernetes already entered into a mainstream market, right? So that is the thing, right? So everybody is learning Kubernetes, right? So what is the second point? Up to 5,000 nodes can be connected to a single cluster, right? So pretty huge environment. That is why even Netflix gaming application, right? So Pokemon was initially failed, right? And within a week. Right, people were downloading and were not able to run that application because of word of mouth, right? So they were not able to run that application because of word of mouth, it was so popular. And these guys, they did a testing on 50,000 user load only, assuming that if they get a customer base of 50,000 users, they are good enough and they will make the money and they will be again happy to go guys. But what happened is, it was failing the application and they heard the story of Netflix and the moment they deployed into Kubernetes cluster, that is the history. That is the history. In Kubernetes, you guys, whatever you deploy, it will be automatically taken care, right? Auto scaling and because of all that feature self healing and auto scaling. So that is the history, right? So up till 5000, it's a huge setup. So you can connect into a single cluster, right? And that is how the Kubernetes, Google is running all these containers, right? And five. So on single node, if I talk about around 100 pods, we can deploy, right? So 100 and we have 5000 machines. 100 pod on single machine. So 5000, 100 into 5 means around 5 million pods I can deploy. Right, around 5 million pods can be running every in a single cluster. Kubernetes will manage all of them. Right, so that's the power of Kubernetes, and that is the reason it's so popular. And it is the ninth most active repository in Git because since it's open source, so day in day out people are using. And that's the one of the reason why Kubernetes is so popular. Right, and why it is making so huge buzz in the market because of this reason. Right, everybody is moving about to manage their application, host their application into a much more mature tool who can give a huge, huge orchestration engine power, right? So that is the reason we are having this thing. Core features, auto scaling, cell filling, monitoring, scalability, and many more. So these are the core features of Kubernetes. Hands-on experience, right? At Mind, Mind Magic, we give you a complete hands-on experience with covering a real-time example, right? And it's a production environment. We do that. So core stack, so this complete core stack is followed by a production use cases, and we follow a certification track, right? So at Mind Magic. Our course we have crafted in such a way that we are following a certification track for CKA and CKAD. Both today we are preparing you for that. We are preparing you for that. So we have crafted this course, keeping the certification in mind. Keeping the certification in mind, we are doing that because certification has a lot of value in the market, and we are training here. So while learning Kubernetes, we will train you and prepare you for certification. So tomorrow you can go and write your exam. Let's talk about market insight. So it's a global application, right? So now it already has a global performance. And as I said, Kubernetes has entered into a mainstream market. So nobody can live without it. All big players, Azure, Microsoft, right? So Google and AKS, right? So, or EKS, Elastic Kubernetes Service from AWS, everybody has it, right? So global application container orchestration market is expected to grow from USD 1.2 billion, right? It was expected in 2018, right? It was there with a USD of around 4.98. 4 almost, if you compare this figure, it's almost equivalent to 4.99, right? Or equivalent to 5 times, right? So 5 times, right? Tremendous growth, right? And it's in a billion figure just in few years, right? So by 2023, it would be reaching this thing. It's already in a high pace growth, right? So we have high pace growth in more than 
32.9% and that was the forecast, right? So global application. So these guys, they do all these things. It's a market research and they do all these things. And they do a complete survey on various corporate houses, various market surveys. And from there, they have arrived. So they then they do a forecast. Right? So it's a very popular thing. Market trend, very high demand in the market, right? So it's a very high market in demand. To give you a feel of it, what is the pay scale if you learn this Kubernetes? Let me click here and show you. So we have intentionally put this link for you so that you have some idea about it. So can you look at it here? So here you have a salary, right? So Kubernetes salary is basically a six-figure flat salary and it's in USD, right? And it's a official portal, right? Pay scale portal where you will find all skill sets, right? So even the software engineer, his package would, average package would start from again six, right? 102K, right? USD, right? So this is the package, right? If you want to look at the hourly rate, you can even look at the hourly rate. Senior engineer, right? So see that. Development, right? DevOps engineer, right? So see the value after Kubernetes. So Kubernetes is basically a needed, needed, very much needed, needed skill set in today's requirement, right? So this is the need of the hour. We should have this skill set as soon as possible, right? Hourly rates also you can see it here, right? So around 47 is the minimum engineer's hourly rate, right? 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 And go up to 75, right? So this is somewhere here. Right, for development also 60 USD or for if you are a lead role, it will further increase and you can search even city wise also here. So even I want to give you like job market also, right? So there is a slide we can talk about that. So all that is for you. Certifications available, right? So as I said, at Mind Magic we do all this. This our course is crafted from certificate module and we our track, right? So our course track is also followed by certificate, right? So we are following the same certification track. And we do all these things, right? So we see, prepare you for this exam, right? You can later, if you want, you can do it, right? So I have provided the links here also. So you can just click here and you can go to these links and get all the details. You will find all the certification details also. That is what we do, right? Kubernetes certificate administrator, right? So the certification fees is $300, but one retake is free, right? So basically there are two chances. If you clear in first go, which is well and good. If you fail in first go, right? There's another second retake will be absolutely free. So that is included in this thing. Right, so don't worry about it. Right, mind magic will ensure that you will clear in first attempt itself. Right, so that is how. And here, if you see the weightage go down, right, so you see application lifecycle management installation config. I was talking about 12% weightage, right, core concept networking, scheduling, security, cluster maintenance, logging, monitoring, storage, troubleshooting, right. So the complete weightage is given, right, and we follow the complete track and we have our complete thing, right. So I was talking about scheduling, security, networking, storage, all that thing. So this is CK which is 3 hours thing and $300. We also have another type of certification which is simpler than CK. CK is little more, right, more popular, more tough. But this guy, you can even go for application developer, right, if you are coming from this thing. And this is 2 hours exam, right. So again CK, right, application developer and we also cover this part. Few modules are different, otherwise most of things are same, right. So most of things are same. So here you don't have installation and all that thing, right. So you don't have. Right, core concept, configuration, multi container observability, right, where I was talking about probe, right, liveliness and readiness code for design, right, and services networking and state persistent, right. So all that thing, we are state persistent and networking that is storage, right. So all that we cover, both the certificates. So our track follows the same certificate track, right. So mind magic and this certificate authorized certification track, we also follow the same track and we revise our course every two months, right. We revise our course every two months. So that is the, that is the USP, that is the crux of mind magic, right. We are the global online training provider, right. We give the play platform for people who want to get certified, right. So we give platform to the professional. Certification on demand, what is happened? In today's market of Kubernetes orchestration technology skills are highly on demand. And the certification will set a bar, right? So you will be shortlisted based on certificate. So largely, mostly when recruitment team and other agencies, when they work for hiring people, they look for certified people, right? So here, once you are certified, automatically you will be picked up by a large people, right? So and the most big renowned players in the market. Be able to display the certificate on logo and resumes and social media. So you can put the logo and accordingly, it will be picked up, right? When people are looking at your certification logo in your resume or in your social media profile. And as a social LinkedIn profile, Nokri portal or various other monster and various other job portals. Be the first to earn CK or CKD and gain recognition of your career path, right? So there's going to dynamic, these new dynamics will change your life, right? So it's a new 
skill set and automatically it's the demand of the hour need of the hour and everybody is looking at the thing and that is what we have bring down under mind magic so that people can comfortably complete the course with the hands on experience right so this is what we do here try right? some random choice of the topic which we already did it right so i just showed it so normally i take one thing here so if i get time we will do something here i'll pick it up right so i'll not mention but we'll pick it up for sure right so just to give you some insights what projects and or what thing we do so just to give you sample thing one and two probably display here so what we do we take spring boot data spring boot application which is a database application so many people they want that database application people also want to have a database experience in kubernetes or any other application which on request based right so we can also take a request and we can show you how to configure and have this application inside kubernetes right so in kubernetes cluster we do all that thing system requirement kubernetes deployment what we know we always do on a multi node deployment right where we see scalability rolling update right auto scaling all that so we don't do on mini cube but we rather do on a production environment is supported by many multi node cluster right so we do on everything on multi node live demonstration yes we do hands on thing live example real example real time example so all that thing we do other thing so micro service based application also we do right so lot of services micro service based application we do system requirement again right so kubernetes services we use micro service we use lot of services here right i was talking about cluster ip node port and all that things and using those things we expose our application to the outside world right so how the people will access my application which are running inside cluster so we give this access right via endpoint right so when services have we have a endpoint concept and we we enable all that thing so here we will create many services right so i gave you few example internal external and we create all that thing live demonstration yes again this will be demonstrated and we will do it here for you then you you also do as an assignment you will also be doing some various followed by various projects also right so we will give you complete assignment based real time exposure here so that you have a complete hands on Session. lab setup so this is our few in details of our lab setup we use for docker because docker is essentially needed so kubernetes has a dependency on docker so we use again on aws kubernetes multi node cluster on aws again we use aws only system requirement so multi node master we use cloud instance is needs a two cpu for kubernetes master node worker node we are good with one cpu one gb ram right so we say we are good with it and normally operating system we use linux and ubuntu user profile so as and when it needs for installation we use root user profile like that we have our own user based profile and we can access the thing so that is all about our setup of lab lab setup here what are the additional things we are providing as a resource at mind magic training materials and daily commands module wise will be provided on daily basis right so we'll be doing a module by module and it's a hands on session so when we demonstrate we will also take a snapshot of all the command which we have done by in linux we have a history command in history command it will give me all the command which we have done today and we will put put that command into a file and we'll upload that file so that it will be made available to you and we do that thing repeatedly every day so on daily basis whatever topic we will cover you will be getting all that thing along with the course material assessment course has been crafted from a certified module as i already told you right ck and ck ad both things we are doing it here and completely based on hands on session right so it's a purely a hands on session we will create a lab and cluster production cluster environment where we will do deployment services every day so kubernetes is all about deployment and services so here we will get the complete experience by having lot of assignments project will be done for your self assessment right so we will also come to know whether you are understanding the things or not when you do assignment right so that is the assessment for us to know where you stand right if you need some help we will again go and we will help you so that we can bring you to the speed right so we do lot of so we do lot of uh, right we take care of all these things right so mind magic we we care we take care of everything here right so we do we put lot of effort to make sure that everybody is learning and they have a real time exposure right so we ensure that and we take all real time use cases right regarding documentation so each kubernetes module has its own this basically a kubernetes as i said is a synonym another name of kubernetes in short we say kata it has its own documentation and pdf and execution of command which will be provided on daily basis we will give you a lot of pdf so like file yaml files and commands and everything will be given to you eventually you will you will not be able to just read the yaml file but you will be able to create your own yaml file so it will bring you to that stage so we do all that thing with the utmost commitment right and we will execute that you learn all latest thing by having a real time experience useful references for certification so we provide mock tests we give you other valuable links also right so that before attending exam you should have a mock test you should know what conceptually whether you have understood the thing or not so something will guide you here 
from certificate point of view here we will give you a lot of information here sample resumes end of the course we will share some sample resumes so that you should know how to upgrade your cv once you learn this this course at mind magic we will also help you so we will take some sample we will pick up the best of the best based on the development background testing background system admin background architect background and we take the sample resumes and we will guide you how to create your own resume right the sample resume will be shared with you preparation guide also will give you we will assist you in terms of kubernetes market job right when you see the specification of job specification you will get to see many things right but we will make sure that what we have learned and how to match with that and what you can put in your cv so that you will be shortlisted and when people will go okay you are coming from development so these are the things you already know right so that way your cv have a lot of weight right so we will give you all that so we have we normally what we do end of the course at mind magic we have one session and one session we do all these things right we discuss only about jobs and all that thing there is one slide for job but because of time constraint i will show you city wise also you can job, see the job not only country wise india right or like uk or us but city wise also right what all the jobs available in london what all the jobs available in california or new jersey or new york or what are the jobs available in bangalore or mumbai or pune or hyderabad or chennai delhi right all that thing we can we can filter you by city wise because nowadays huge job opportunities are there and you need to upgrade your skill set to get on to new job traditional skill set nobody will hire people right? so that is the reason at mind magic with utmost patience and utmost effort we take care of each and everything course demonstration right so i can demonstrate you for Helm also, I'll take another minute because this is also part of the Mr. Defecto Packaging Manager for Kubernetes. So let's understand this thing, right? So let me quickly go and install this thing, right? Not take much time. So as I said, we demonstrate, right? So many runtime things. So let me do Helm car. So people have a requirement, but it's not part of certification, but we do extra, right? We take extra care, right? At Mind Magic, we take care we take care extra care for all these things so we thought that it is also valuable thing so we included this thing also right so so that is where mind magic is uh because in over other competitors mind magic is leading clear right mind magic is the leading clear over other competitors why because we do lot of effort we give lot of insight we give lot of experience right once people join we will build his complete profile from ground zero right eventually from basic to advanced level we bring so we put lot of effort right from daily basis a lot of effort go in and we bring to the speed to the people so that tomorrow they should be able to independently they should be able to manage kubernetes cluster environment right so that's the expectation from mind magic and we stand by that expectation right that's the promise right so that is the objective which we we will always stick to right so let me say whenever you want to do installation so right so where i am so let me quickly check kubectl get node Come at the master node, right? So always we do or everything master node only. We don't go to worker node. So from master node only we manage the entire cluster, right? From master node only we manage the entire cluster. So let me install here. So sudo the install sudo snap, right? Snap snap is the default installer which is already comes upon Ubuntu when you install Ubuntu. Right? What I want to install? I want to install Helm. So when you file this thing, it will go and it will look for your Helm and it will install the Helm. Right, almost we are done. We will take another two minutes just to give you an experience. Right, so my Helm, what is the most recent version? Is 3. Dot, 3 is the version and this is the version. My 3.2.4 is the most recent. Right, 3.0 they have changed the architecture and we are using the most recent version. So I install my Helm. Right, so I install my Helm. Let me create my Helm chart now. So Helm is the my main command here. Right? All command will start from Helm. What I want, I want to create it. Right? What I want, I want to create it. What do you want? You can give any name. So I will give my chart. Right? We create chart. So chart is nothing but a package library kind of thing where we will managing all our packages. I am creating my chart here. So my chart is created. Right, my chart is created. So I have created my chart. Now, what do you want? We want to see the structure, right? So when I say ls, so my chart has been created. My chart has been created. But what do you want? We want to see the the tree structure, right? We want to see the tree structure. So let me quickly go. And the tree command is not there. Can I see tree command here? Uh, Three command not found. So let me quickly go and install that. So to Ubuntu machine apt get update apt get right apt get install. 
what I want to install three commands so that we can see the much more organized way. Right, so here it is giving me the tool. Right, I can install like that. So to do get install three hyphen y. Let me go and install it. So I will install it. Let me clear the screen. So if I say ls, so I have my chart created. So my chart I just created. Now if I say three command and let me say my chart, or I can go into the directory and fire the command. So this is my chart, right? So what we have, so we have all my YAML files will come here. I have the chart chart. All my deployment services for all my YAML files will come here. We have, right? So these blue are nothing. Blue are my Directories and white color are my files. Right? Blue are my folders. White color are my directories. Right? So under template, we use template. So all my deployment file will come here. Right? So my horizontal pod auto scaler will come here. Ingress services, service account. Right? All will come here. We can create even nodes also. Right? Some installation node or some readme kind of step we can provide. Helper template also is available. I can use the template thing. So here it's a key value pair. Right? So we use template and it's a key value pair. Just feed in the appropriate parameter and the Value that it right and everything is ready and here we use values here if we can manage right so that like that with a single hand chart I have created the structure and is the defect question for managing the packages right right now we have not created much but as soon as we create our deployment we will have our understanding that everything will go into the thing and Kubernetes right the the building block is YAML thing right YAML is building block and nowadays YAML comes with all the tools right whether it's a Docker. Kubernetes. So this is what we are going to learn, and we will further explore it. Don't worry about it. So this is what we wanted to cover up here, right? So this is what we do, and we do a lot of things here. That's all for today's session. Any questions? We can get onto the question. So what you can do? You can test this with Mind Magic and get the course content, get the duration. Normally Kubernetes we do two to three weeks, right? Sometimes for people under say we do repetition, so it will go plus a right? few sessions. Plus, right? So two days and more, right? So two to three days it takes, and based on that we finish this thing. And every day we do this course for one hour to one and a half hour, right? So around sixty to seventy-five minutes. We every day we do. We have sessions, and we do hands-on session for Kubernetes to complete the thing, right? So that's all from for today's session. Thank you all. Thanks for joining in, and thanks for listening. So it's been almost close to one and a half or two hours, right? We have been. Understanding Kubernetes and the intention was to give you as much as information and mind magic. We take care of lot of things with lot of patience and as we are global partner and with lot of experience and with lot of expertise, our all trainers are highly qualified and experienced people who will train you, right? Who will train you when we take care of everything? As I said, our course module is crafted from following the certificate module, right? So we are following the certificate module and we will give you a live example, real time experience. Right, we fit all hands-on thing by followed by assignments and projects. Right, and materials will also be provided. Another thing is AWS. We do all installation on AWS cloud. Right, so we will create your account and we will also help you to have everything in place so that you can set up your environment. You can do in your own own environment also. Right, if you have comfortable with your environment, you can do even that side that thing also because we will be using bare metal installation. So you can do bare metal installation on your physical computer or at your home computer or your laptop or even you can use your some machines if you have VM machines you can create and you can use it. Right? Normally even people can create virtualized toolbox and they can create even virtualized images by using Vagrant or Terraform and you can even use that. So Kubernetes is a mainstream application. So the way you want to install you can install it. Right? So we do all that thing. So once again, thank you very much. Thank you.